Hello viewers, here is a Carrier Siesta Series 5000 BTU air conditioner from the 1982. Take a look at the data sheet, which does have some of the mold in there, so we're going to have to clean that up. It is, uh, let's see here. There's the date code, March of 1982, 13.3 ounces of refrigerant gold, R22, and uh, let's see here, the power draw is 7.5, it's pretty high for a 5000, but if it gets cold, it gets cold, I don't care, it can draw as much power as it wants. Let's see, take a look at the coil here, yeah, it's dirty, uh, but it's, it's in good condition. This was uh, one of two machines I acquired recently. They came from the same house. And um, the guy wanted $50 for the machine. I thought he was talking $50 per machine. And I said, that's fine, you know, can we just test them out? You know, because a working machine for 50 bucks of this era is even that's a really good price. So I was prepared to pay $50 for each machine. He turned it on and it just created this lovely compressor sound that started to cool. And then I guess he went to turn this knob and I, I didn't realize at the time that it wasn't working. And so he said, how about 40? I said, okay, you know, 40 is totally fine. And then it turns out he was talking about 40 per machine. I mean, ugh, that was, ugh completely anticlimactic <laughs> 40 dollars per both machines so I ended up paying 20 dollars for this thing and aside from this I think this is would be the thermostat aside from the thermostat not working it's in pretty good condition the buttons work which is kind of a relief because if anything is going to break on the control panel let it be that dial because I can fix that this is very hard to fix now it does not have with it the side panels and I don't know if it well I don't know what what became of them over the years but he uh, he gave me a crazy contraption with the machine which is this thing over here now this I kind of good I got a good laugh out of this because what this is is for putting it over the window so um, and the unit will sit nicer on the window and my grandfather always does this <laughs> and my grandmother used to say nobody else in the world does that but well, here we go we have evidence that apparently <laughs> other people do this as well so we have those which I understand what that is well then he gave me this and said it goes with it, but this I don't understand what the use case for this would have been. The guy was a very mechanical, handy person. He had a incredible selection of tools in the basement. So these are home brew contraptions, um, and they're labeled. I don't know what the. I guess I would say bedroom and extra room, maybe. I don't know. I didn't look there. I don't know what they considered the bedroom and the extra room. But I got two of those. One for the other machine, which I'll give a quick preview of right now. The other machine is a 1980s Fetters. And the other pieces that he gave me with the unit were these. And he said these are the, um, are the side panels you know, that went with that wood contraption. And it definitely was because it's got the same tape on there. So somehow this fit in the window and it probably you know it probably was a really sturdy solid contraption I highly doubt that it'll fit any other window in the world but I bet it worked great anyways let's go ahead and get this thing plugged up and turn it on and move it around so we can take a look at the compressor what side is it on? Yeah. 
It is a reciprocating compressor and it has an absolutely amazing sound to it. I'll plug in the light so that we can kind of maybe get a look in there. And it wouldn't be a video if I didn't fall on the tripod. I have plugged this thing in hundreds of times and that's never happened, but of course because the camera is on it's going to screw up. back and this is in really good condition I don't see any rust on the coil at all immaculate really incredible uh, this has been in the window for well maybe it hasn't been in the window but it's been around for 39 years and there's not a ding on that condenser Does this have a drain hole in there? Oh yeah, look at that. That's why there's no rust, because the water can go out. Yeah, you just can't get quality machines like this anymore. Three drain holes for the water to go out. And is the condenser pretty clean? Yeah, it is pretty clean. Ugh. Okay, let's see. Well, yeah, it's that's okay, it's pretty dirty, but that's fine. We can clean that up. The only problem with this machine is the fan motor is it needs to be lubricated, but after 39 years, if the only thing that's wrong with it is the sleeve bearing needs some oil. There is no complaining to be had. Alright, let's plug this in. Oh, let's take a look at the plug first. Surprisingly, there's no deformities with the plug at all yet. It's still perfectly fine. And I'm going to put the camera over here so we can get this startup sound and here we go and it's too cold in here again <laughs> okay well so much for that I'll have to put the heater on and try to heat it up because I think the thermostat is not one that uh, yeah the thermostat is, is uh, somewhere else. I don't know exactly where it is in this particular machine, but either way, it's not warm enough in here yet, so let me get the heater going and see if I can warm it up. Well, I got it to start up, but the stinking camera wasn't recording, which of course is not the fault of the camera because the camera can't press the button by itself. So, Try again. And of course, now because it's now warm, but it's been running for a few minutes. I don't think it'll have that really pronounced startup sound that it had before. I just have the heater going right in there to to keep the thermostat on. I think this is the thermostat. I can't see what it says there. It's kind of worn out, but this is just locked solid. And I'm not sure why it's like that. 
All right, let's see. I think the head pressure should have gone down enough by now. Nope. If I could turn the thermostat off and run the fee in, it would go down faster, but I can't. Okay, I guess the exhaust was open. Now that seems to work. I can hear the something shutting in there. That's such a gimmicky feature. It doesn't really do any good. Alright, here we go again. The heater is on, and we're, we're putting 165 degree air into that evaporator, and it's blowing out 68. You just can't, you can't get machines like this anymore. I'll cut this heater off, and we're not going to have long because it's cold in here, but it'll run for a little while under normal conditions. I don't think I can get this to stall the fee and only. Oh, I guess I could. out of battery so unfortunately that's at some point this video is going to stop uh, whether I want it to be done or not but well, that's that's cold very very cold and this is this is with a filthy condenser too Even that's giving us a delta of 30. And you saw what it was doing with that thing going in there. It was doing like delta 50 or 60. And of course, this is not a very good way to test it. You need to have a thermometer that measures the air temperature, not so much the surface. <clears throat> but this is not really a super scientific video. This is just to show that it's working.
Okay, that's going to conclude this video. It looks like the camera battery liked this production because it's still going. So that was the Carrier Siesta. What did we say the model number was? I gotta get that for the title in the description that nobody reads. The model number is. Uh, it's all kind of hard to read. Looks like 51EKA005111. Cosmetics of this thing are incredible, and not a scratch on that front plate. 